What's up, beautiful ladies and handsome men? I am not sure what's true or false in this story. I take gossip, tea, rumor, and scandal from yesteryear, from online, from word of mouth, from books, and I ball it up and I tell you guys a story. Now, let's get to it. Hi, everybody. This is Ashley with Ashley Says So, and I am back with another old Hollywood Scandals video. And as we wait for one of my wigs to come in for an extravagant video, let's talk about Jack Nicholson. Now, honey, I didn't heard us a messy behind white boys but could jack be the messiest oh baby you know it's just a scandalous thing child we may as well go ahead and get to the story. Let's get to it. John Joseph Nicholson was born on April the 22nd, 1937 in Neptune, New Jersey. His mother was a showgirl named June Francis Nicholson and his father, I don't know because gossip claims June didn't know. As a matter of fact, June was living with some would call a wild lifestyle and what others would call a fun lifestyle. Uh, so she actually got pregnant with Jack very early on uh, when she was around 17 years old. And because of that, her parents ended up raising Jack as their own son and raising him like June was his sister. And that brings us to our first bit of tea because Jack Nicholson was 37 years old before he found out that June was not his sister, but in fact his actual mother. And honey, guess who Messy Tail told that boy that doggone information? Time Magazine. Turns out when Jack was 37, Time Magazine ended up doing a write-up about him. And so their researchers started to dig deep into his family background and they found out that uh, June was not his sister, but his mother. They actually called Jack Nicholson talking about some, um, hi, we did some digging and we found out that June is not your sister. She's your mother. How do you feel about that? almost tore Jack Nicholson apart because again, this man had no idea. Nobody in his family had ever told him that. And so now here comes Time Magazine with this doggone revelation. And then uh, the bad part about it is that his mother June, as well as his grandmother, the woman who he thought was his mother, were both dead at this time. But anyways, to rewind it back to his youth for a little while, uh, when Jack was 13, he ended up visiting some relatives in California. And that is when he ended up getting a job at the office of Hannah and Barbera. They are the ones that used to do all of the big cartoons back in the day. So while Jack was working at their office, he was also offered a job as an animator, but he had already made up his mind that he didn't want to do no cartoons, animating, voiceover, any of that. He wanted to be an actor. So he ended up turning that job down. What he did do, however, is started to study all of the actresses and actors around him because a lot of times he would be working at MGM studio. So he started to study them and study their behavior and he would take that behavior back to New Jersey and start acting an outright fool. Suddenly he thought it was funny to cut up in school all the time. He was always joking on somebody, picking with the teachers, uh, just doing the most. He got detention every single day for a full year when he first got to high school. Thankfully, by the time he graduated though, he felt like he wanted to be a little more serious with life. So in 1957, he ended up joining the California Air National Guard. And since he was stationed in California, he took full advantage of that and and dove head first into the acting business. And things paid off pretty doggone quickly. I mean, in 1958, the boy uh, was featured in his first film. Now this was not a big role at all, but it did help him because it gave him a push and it also gave him experience. So um, he started to get more and more films. But the problem was, is that these films were B films. You know, it took Jack Nicholson forever to get into an A-list movie. It took him probably about five or six years. Eventually, and obviously, he he did end up making it into A-list movies, but what do I always say, honey? We ain't talking about no doggone achievements. We ain't talking about no doggone accolades. Baby, we are here for the scandals. And Jack Nicholson, bald-headed tail, show sure enough got some. Let's get to it. So now y'all, here's the thing. It seems like Jack Nicholson could not wait to get into show business just so he could start cutting up. So he instantly got close to one of the biggest, if not the biggest, not only cut up, but uck up in Hollywood at that time, and that was Mr. Errol Flynn. And boy, oh boy, did Hollywood bad boy Flynn teach Jack Nicholson some doggone tricks. The first trick, of course, was women. Errol Flynn taught Jack Nicholson how to woo these women, how to put the Mac on them, you know what I'm saying? Then how to get them in the bedroom and then just cut out the next day, you know what I'm saying? Act like they don't even know the woman no more. And Jack had a lot of personality, so it was not long before he mastered getting women. And 
then Jack called Errol with another problem. He let him know, you know, Errol, I'm getting the women, but when it's time to really get the women, I'm only lasting probably about two to three minutes. So Errol told him, cocaine is the answer. Cocaine, cocaine. And then Jack told him, uh, that can't be the answer. Cause I've been snorting cocaine and that ain't helping. And Errol says, snort. Oh no, my dear man, you've been doing it all wrong. And that's when Errol tells him that you need to sprinkle the cocaine on your problem area. And that's gonna make you last all night. Baby, next thing you know, it was all kind of coked up TTs walking around. And I ain't talking about Jack's doggone TT. I'm talking about the women because there were plenty of them that he did this with. Baby, the folks say he even tried it with Princess Margaret. Honey, say Princess Margaret came to a Hollywood party that Jack was at. Everybody else is curtsying, bowing, and all this kind of stuff. Baby, she got to Jack. Jack whispered in her ear, hey, uh, I got some cocaine. And once you see what I can do with it, we can have a lot of fun. And Princess Margaret did what she did well, snarled up her nose and looked the other way. But Jack didn't care, baby, it was on to the next one. And baby, Canada finna be mad at me, honey, because gossip claims that one of the next women was Prime Minister Justin Trudeau's mama. They said that Jack Nicholson had that woman climbing up and down the doggone bedpost. But Jack Nicholson wasn't the only one, honey, because gossip claims that Justin Trudeau's mama was lit lit. Baby, she was so lit that she would go to all kind of parties with no panties on. As a matter of fact, it is a picture on the internet right now of Justin Trudeau's mama sitting at a doggone party with no doggone panties on. I'm gonna put the link in the description. Go look at it, it's like surprising because it's just sitting there. And speaking of parties, Rumor on the old Hollywood street says that uh, Jack Nicholson used to have some wild parties. As a matter of fact, you know how they start talking about uh, Illuminati, secret things and stuff like that? Gossip claims that Jack Nicholson's parties are some of the parties that they are talking about. The old Hollywood street says that Jack Nicholson's parties were so secretive that people not only back then, but even today will not open their mouth to talk about the things that used to go down to Jack Nicholson's parties. Now, I do know that there were a whole bunch of orgies and uh, drugs and stuff like that, but allegedly some more very, very wicked things went down at these parties. Now, I'm not gonna speculate, but I can say that it had to be some shysty behind stuff because see, Roman Polanski was uh, brave enough to do his business at Jack Nicholson's house. And yes, I'm talking about that business in the 1970s when Roman Polanski brought a 13 year old girl named Samantha over to Jack Nicholson's house. Jack Nicholson was actually out of town at this time, but Roman Polanski asked him if he could use his house. Jack says yes. So again, Roman Polanski brings this girl over to the house. He tells her that he wants to do a photo shoot. You know, she's a beautiful model. Baby, next thing you know, that girl was on the floor and mm mm mm. Gossip claims that Roman Polanski was doing some unimaginable things. This whole situation with predatory Roman Polanski uh, blew up into big news. The police brought charges against Roman Polanski, but he ended up ditching or fleeing the United States before the court date. And um, he still like has never come back into the United States because if he steps foot on this soil, then they're gonna be uh, trying to lock us behind us. So anyways, I told you that by the 1970s, Jack Nicholson had numerous types of different drugs in his home. Well, gossip claims that he actually started using acid. Honey, they said he took it one day and started to fantasize and then started to jerky jerky. I don't know if somebody was there and walked in on him and got kind of turned on by this. I don't know how it happened. All I know is that allegedly somebody kind of asked him, you know, like, what you thinking about? What you fantasize? Baby, Jack Nicholson told them that he was jerky jerky to himself cutting off his jerkster. And I really hate, I have to use these cartoon doggone terms to uh, say this story to y'all, but y'all, they have really been on me. So I hope y'all are following the story. Basically, like I said, he was jerky jerky and he was fantasizing. Castration is the word I'm looking for. But that's just his fantasies. Let's not forget about the hallucinations, honey. I imagine that Jack Nicholson was at home one day crying and speaking in tongues. Skaribuskatayna. Skaribuskite. Oh, glory. I can't speak in tongues. But anyways, I imagine that is what he was doing. And the reason I say this is because he was telling everybody around him that he could see the face of God clearly. And it probably was. God probably was finna get ready to bust him upside the head because Jack was doing too much. Let me just say this. The man said that he had slept with over 2,000 women and majority of those women that he slept with, he did it while he was dating Angelica Houston. Now, Angelica was not one of his first loves or anything like that. As a matter of fact, uh, it was a lady by the name of Sandra Knight 
who actually was his first love. She also became his first and only wife. He and Sandra ended up having one child together, but the marriage didn't last because Jack was moving real funny style. He starred in a movie with an actress named Susan Anspach and was always flirting with her, touching on her, trying to get with her, but Susan was married. Nine months after the movie was over, Susan ended up having a baby and her husband was so full of joy but then ended up bald-headed because the baby belonged to Jack Nicholson. Then Jack Nicholson spotted beautiful singer Michelle Phillips and they quickly started messing around, but this was a trifling shysty behind mess. He spotted her when he saw her and her husband his best friend out to eat. Now rumor has it that Michelle and her husband quickly divorced after that, but that does not change the fact that Jack Nicholson was messing with his best friend's wife or even best friend's ex-wife. But Jack didn't have one care in the world, honey, and that was because it wasn't too long before he moved on to Angelica Houston. And they got together in 1973, and from the very start, there were problems in this relationship because Jack Nicholson was still doing heavy drugs and he also was still doing Michelle Phillips. He had Angelica Houston and Michelle Phillips ready to fight each other. And it's very obvious that he liked it. He liked this toxic behavior because this is what he used to do. Call Angelica and tell her, hey, we're going to go out for a hot day. Be ready at 7 p.m. 7 p.m. comes, Jack Nicholson pulls up to Michelle Phillips' house. Honey would have Angelica at home stressed the heck out because she don't know where he is. She thinks he's in a car wreck or something like that, but no, he just didn't cancel the date with her and uh, decided to go out with this other woman. And not only would he do Angelica like this, he would switch it up and do Michelle like this. And because he was so disrespectful, especially to Angelica, which he was supposed to be her man, because he was so disrespectful and would do these things out in the open, like some of the women that he messed around with, they felt like it was cool to disrespect Angelica too. Joni Mitchell, for example. The folks say that one time in the early 1970s, Jack Nicholson and Angelica Houston went to a concert that was outside. Baby said Joni Mitchell came walking up, looked at Angelica, and then looked at Jack and was like, hey, open your legs for me. He opened his legs. Joni Mitchell sat down on the ground between his legs. She got her head all leaned up against his chest. You know, she rubbing on his arms, he rubbing on her, and Angelica sitting up there looking crazy. And guess who else gossip claims got in on the disrespect? Hollywood's queen, honey, Miss Meryl Streep. Oh yeah, honey. Meryl Streep like to play like she's a good girl. You know, she's never done anything. You know, she's too up here. Baby, they say Jack Nicholson had Meryl Streep in the trailer behind the set blowing Meryl's back out. Said the whole trailer was rocking, but then she come out the trailer with her head all high, looking around at folks like this. And the folks sitting up there like, uh, sis, what you looking at us for? You was the one sitting up there in that trailer getting your backpack. Then he cheated on Angelica with James Bond girl Jill St. John. Started cheating on her with a model named Winnie Holman. And the folks say that Winnie actually had a daughter by him. And when Angelica found out about this daughter, she was preparing to leave because she didn't want to be embarrassed in front of the whole world. But then Jack Nicholson basically decided not to claim the child. And allegedly this made Angelica pause and not leave because Jack wasn't claiming this child and also there was no way to prove this child was his. Basically it was gonna be hushed up and put undercover and she wouldn't be embarrassed. Also Jack was pleading with her to give him another chance. You know, he would never be this careless again. Turned right around, started cheating with Rebecca Broussard and got her pregnant. Did the exact same thing that Angelica was about to leave him for before. So Angelica is like, you know what, that's it buddy that is it that is two babies that you've had on me and this girl right here she's gonna let the world know that you are her child's father that's it 17 years down the drain and here go jack please angelica don't please you're gonna ruin my whole life you're gonna take me through my darkest days and i'm actually not even over exaggerating no gossip claims that jack nicholson broke down jack nicholson stopped eating and everything he also started dragging himself up you know the man was just down and out but throughout all of this misery and all of this suffering and this pain, Rebecca the side chick ended up pregnant again for the second time. So what's going on Jack Nicholson? You were sitting up there saying that you couldn't eat, but you sure could ski. Boy, go on. But while Rebecca Broussard was sitting up there smiling and cheesing because she had finally got Jack from Angelica Houston, the tee hee hee was on her. Because soon Jack Nicholson started messing around with another lady named Janine and got her pregnant as well. 
And with all this stick and lick and quick and dick and going down, Jack Nicholson ended up having, um, allegedly, six children by five different women. But even though Jack Nicholson didn't stop sticking and licking once, uh, Angelica left, it's clear that something did happen to his mental state because this man became a menace. On February the 8th, 1994, Jack Nicholson was driving through North Hollywood when a guy by the name of Robert Blank made a mistake and cut Jack off. They get to a red light and as soon as Robert stopped, Jack Nicholson jumps out of his car, grabs a golf club, walks up to Robert's car and starts busting that car all upside the head. He knocked the roof in, smashed the windshield, smashed the tail lights, the headlights, and the whole time was screaming for Robert to get out of the doggone car so he could knock him out too. Cha! The folks say that Robert was finna get out the car, but baby say he took one look at doggone Jack Nicholson, Jack's face was all red, and his hair looked like the uh, little monkey from the Jungle Book. Baby, they said that Robert took off. Then, listen at this. I guess Jack Nicholson got bored with messing around with actresses or something like that, so he decided to start messing around with ladies of the night. So the old Hollywood streets say that he picked up one, took her back to a hotel room, and she did every stinking nasty thing that Jack asked her to do. And so the lady is putting on her stuff, and she's like, okay, I'm ready for my money. So Jack is kind of just laid on the bed, you know, like this, and he's like, oh, okay, yeah, that's right, hold on. So he gets up out of the bed, gets his wallet, and then he's looking in his wallet, and you know how you just kind of like flip the bills back and forth, and so he's kind of counting through his bills, and he's walking up to the lady like this, why come when he got up to that woman, he took that wallet and bust that woman upside the head? Honey said Jack slapped her a couple of more times with the wallet and told her that she wasn't getting a dime. And so the woman went to the law. And in the end, Jack Nicholson not only had to pay $1,000, this man had to pay around $40,000. Now that's a great little come up for old girl. You know what I'm saying? Child, why this woman come back to court two years later talking about she needed more money because that wallet upside the head caused her to have brain damage and folks thought she was gonna die and stuff. Baby, they said the judge said, ma'am, if you don't get out of my face, I'm gonna take a wallet and slap you too. Baby, what about the story about Jack Nicholson fighting the socialite? Honey, gossip claims that Jack Nicholson was at some sort of get together and there was this wealthy female socialite and I guess she got a little bit too ahead of herself or something or got too comfortable or something. Baby said she said something about, uh, I don't like the way that you treat your children's mothers. Jack punched the woman in the titty child. Punched that woman titty so doggone hard that her implant burst. After these horrendous episodes with non-famous women, I guess Jack wanted to start back dating actresses. Oh, and then let me tell y'all one other crazy story about Jack Nicholson. I think this may have happened either in the 80s, 90s, or 2000s. I'm not sure. But whatever the case, it was when Jack Nicholson had got a bit older and his body was not in shape like he was used to it being. So he went through like a mental health crisis because he was very depressed. He did not like his figure. Then one day, the man walks out of his bedroom, but naked. The man didn't put on clothes for three months. Even though at least one of his daughters lived in the house with him full time. And yes, he would be around his daughter. Uh, Gossip claims he did interviews talking about how his daughter, you know, she was horrified that her dad was naked, but it's something that he did because he wanted to love his body and this was the only way that he could accept his body. Jack Nicholson also admitted that he did drugs in front of his daughter. So clearly this man lived very freely, you know what I mean? Like he did a lot of unconventional things. Since the 2000s, Jack Nicholson has calmed down a lot. Um, I think the most that he does now is sits around his house with his arms folded, looking at everybody like they get on his nerves. And he's 85 years old, so that makes sense. Anyway, I hope you guys have enjoyed this scandalous story about Jack Nicholson. We have some really, really great stories coming up. So make sure you guys click the subscribe button, click that bell, and then hit the notification for all so you can get all of the notifications. Anyways, love you guys so much. Bye.